Sam Brownback is coming up. But first, some breaking news. House Democrats renewed their push to impeach President Trump this week in the wake of revelations that the president reportedly asked Ukraine's president to investigate the business dealings of former Vice President Joe Biden and his son, Hunter. The transcript of the phone call in question was released on Wednesday. Here with analysis of the situation and to explain the House rules governing impeachment is member of the House Judiciary Committee, Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner. Congressman, thank you for being here. Are you having a bit of deja vu about all of this, Congressman? More horror than deja vu. Uh, Chairman Nadler has completely ignored the procedural safeguards that we used in the Clinton impeachment 20 years ago. Uh, here's what he's done. Uh, he has had hearings where the president has not been able to have witnesses come and defend the president, prevent it, present a defense. Uh, he has broken House rules. He is now talking about not having uh, a vote to establish a formal impeachment inquiry, which was done in both the Clinton and Nixon impeachments. And the reason that he's doing that is that he is denying the president of the United States due process uh, because with a formal inquiry, uh, the president will be able to uh, present a defense, will be able to cross-examine witnesses mm. uh, and let the American public know exactly what happened uh, rather than having the far left of Jerry Nadler, Nancy Pelosi, and the Judiciary Committee Democrats dominate the news cycle. Mm. Uh, speaking of Nancy Pelosi, I want to play this. This was from earlier in the week, actually before the full transcript of this conversation between the Ukraine president and Trump was released. Nancy Pelosi had this very dramatic announcement of a formal impeachment. Watch. And this week, the president has admitted to asking the president of Ukraine to take actions which would benefit him politically. The, action of the, the actions of the Trump presidency revealed the dishonorable fact of the president's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, and betrayal of the integrity of our elections. Therefore, today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. I'm directing our six committees to proceed with their investigations under that umbrella of impeachment inquiry. The president must be held accountable. No one is above the law. What do you make of that announcement? And what does this really mean, Congressman Sensenbrenner? <clears throat> well, it doesn't mean anything because she's refused to put on the floor uh, a motion to have a formal impeachment inquiry, which Republicans did against Clinton 20 years ago and which Democrats did against Nixon in 1974. Mm. Uh, once again, the speaker's mouth has gone into third gear before her mind started up. Uh, they didn't have a copy of the transcript of the speech with Ukrainian President Zelensky. Uh, now we are seeing before the House votes on a demand that the uh, uh, whistleblower's complaint uh, be submitted to the House. That's being submitted as the House is debating this issue. Yeah. Uh, they want, if they want to be a lynch mob, the American public will understand this as such. We ought to get back to legislating. That's what we were elected to do, uh, rather than tying up the country and debating impeachment for the next nine months to a year. Yeah, it seems like we just went through this for two years with the Russian uh, collusion bit. Uh, nothing came of that. Or nothing that they could prosecute the president on or impeach him over. So now it's this call with the Ukrainian president. Just to give the audience a fuller understanding, I'm going to put up the transcript. This was released on Wednesday. Here's what the exchange between President Zelensky and President Trump sounded like. This is the relevant part everybody's talking about. Uh, this is Zelensky. We are ready to continue to cooperate for the next step. Specifically, we are almost ready to buy more javelins from the United States for defense purposes. Then President Trump says, I would like you to do us a favor, though because our country has been through a lot and Ukraine knows a lot about it. I would like you to find out uh, what happened with the whole situation with Ukraine. They say crowd strike. I guess you have one of your wealthy people, the server. They say Ukraine has it. The other thing, 
there's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution, and a lot of people want to find out about that. So whatever you can do with the attorney general would be great. Biden went around bragging that he stopped the prosecution, so you can take a look into it. It sounds horrible to me, end quote. Now, first of all, that line about, can you do me a favor, Congressman Sensenbrenner, that is what Speaker Pelosi and the Democrats are hanging their impeachment talk on, that, that they, they, they say that this is a, a quid pro quo implied. All of us have asked friends or acquaintances to do them a favor. There's not a quid pro quo involved in that. It's just saying, please look into this. Now, what happened is, is that Biden was in the Ukraine uh, asking that the prosecutor that was investigating Hunter Biden's son's company mm -hmm. uh, for corruption be fired. Now, if this was done in the United States, that's a clear case of obstruction of justice. Mm. But I guess because it was done in the Ukraine, it's not. Uh, it's corrupt. Uh, Biden got involved in this, and his son was making over $600,000 a year uh, from the company that was being investigated. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's outrageous, and if that's the case, uh, maybe Biden's going to end up being the collateral damage uh, for what uh, this drive for impeachment Pelosi has decided to lead uh, will happen. Hmm. Does this, any of this sound like a betrayal of the oath of office or of our national security to you? You've been, you've been on this committee on the, on the judiciary for, for 40 years. Does it, does it reek of corruption to you, as Nancy Pelosi implies? Uh, you know, clearly not. You know, we do have something that is called the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. And if United States citizens are involved in any type of bribing of foreign government officials, the Justice Department should go after them. And they've done that a number of times because many cases, the foreign corrupt practices have ended up disadvantaging American companies uh, that don't go bribing foreign officials uh, to uh, foreign companies that do. And this is a way to protect American jobs and American businesses, uh, which is something Donald Trump has been for ever since he became a candidate for president. Yeah. I, I want to play this for you. This is uh, Congressman Adam Schiff. He is the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, one of the committees entrusted by Pelosi with investigating these charges. Here's what he had to say about the conversation between Zelensky and President Trump. Watch. The notes of the call reflect a conversation far more damning than I or many others had imagined. Uh, it is shocking uh, at another level that the White House uh, would release this, these notes uh, and felt that somehow this would help the president's case or cause. Because what those notes reflect is a classic mafia-like shakedown of a foreign leader. They reflect a Ukrainian president who was desperate for U.S. support for military support to help that country uh, in a hot war with Putin's Russia. Was this a mafia-style shakedown in your uh, estimation, Congressman Sensenbrenner, and does it merit a call for impeachment or even an inquiry? Uh, clearly not on both counts. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that the mainstream media over last weekend uh, was talking about uh, Trump talking about Biden eight times. The transcript indicates that he only talked about Biden once, and that was because of an issue that was raised by President Zelensky. Now, uh, you know, my opinion is that this is much ado about nothing. And furthermore, the uh, inspector general who got this whistleblower's report uh, forwarded on because it was based on hearsay, and his cachet uh, is only to investigate alleged misconduct in the intelligence community. Hmm. The president of the United States is not an employee of the intelligence community or any other department. Uh, what the Democrats are trying to do is to reverse the result of an election that happened in 2016. They're going to tie the country up. We're not going to be legislating on major problems, 
And I doubt that uh, if there is a Senate trial, it will not happen until sometime in the early to late spring uh, of next year when we're already in the season of having primary elections and choosing nominees. Wow. If they want to get rid of President Trump, you know, rather than tying the Congress and the country up, uh, they ought to take their case to the American people. Mm -hmm. And I doubt that a damaged Joe Biden or an ultra left wing socialist Elizabeth Warren mm -hmm. is going to get the votes of Americans who don't want to be in the middle and don't want to have any uh, taint of scandal, which Mr. Biden, I think, has got as a result of the events of the past week. Do you think this could ricochet uh, back on uh, Joe Biden? You've got mention of, of this crowd uh, strike group the, that, that secured these servers. The DNC, the Democratic National Committee, apparently contracted with them, but the servers are in Ukraine. That's what the president was asking about. It seems to my eye he was asking a foreign entity, to a foreign country, to look into corruption in their country that may have affected our elections. Isn't that what everybody was so concerned about over the last two years? Well, listening to my Democratic colleagues, you know, they thought that there was collusion between Trump and the Russian government. Uh, the Mueller report very clearly indicated that there was none, even though the Russian government tried to influence our election through pop-up ads on the mm -hmm. Internet and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, they, they put all of their eggs in the Mueller basket. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the Mueller basket ended up uh, uh, collapsing and the eggs fell on the floor and broke. Now they're looking at something else, and I think that this is equally speculative. And when the American people look at it away from the nonstop propaganda mill uh, that we're hearing from the other side of the aisle, uh, they will see that this is just another hit job on a president that they have done nothing but hate uh, since the moment the election results were announced in November of 2016. Congressman Sensenbrenner, I, I want to tie two things. Earlier in the interview, you talked about Nancy Pelosi not wanting to bring this to a vote of the entire House, that, which would really be the trigger for a formal impeachment inquiry. It's clear there are members of the Democratic caucus who don't want to vote on this because they've got an election they're facing. Um, and then on the other hand, you've got these polls, the mammoth poll, 57 percent of Americans against impeachment, a new Quinnipiac poll, 57 percent of Americans against impeachment. Why risk this politically when you're so close to another election? Because she's got, you know, the left wing led by the squad, uh, the four freshman uh, representatives on the Democratic side that have been pushing for impeachment and all other kinds of extremely left-wing socialist uh, 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 legislation uh, that they want to get passed. The American people aren't for that. You know, we're a moderate to conservative country, mm -hmm. and they were sick and tired of what had happened in the swamp, and uh, Donald Trump was able to put his finger on that and ended up winning the White House, even mm -hmm. though none of them expected that ever to happen. Mm -hmm. But there's another thing that is involved in this as well, and that is due process for the president <clears throat> without a formal vote on an impeachment inquiry, which Pelosi might lose. Uh, the fact is, is that what is going on in the Judiciary Committee and other committees does not give the president due process. Mm -hmm. He is not able to confront his accusers. He is not able to put on his own witnesses. And what they have done is completely forgotten in this country is that someone is innocent until proven guilty. And if we ever flip that around where you're guilty until proven innocent, you know, one of the things that has made America the country that it is, is the fact that you do have a presumption of innocence mm -hmm. until either a jury or somebody else that is empowered uh, to do that concludes that you're not innocent. And in a criminal case, it's unanimous and beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, final question. I mean, you have real experience here. You, you were mentioning something before we started that you, you, you really have a historical asterisk next to your career. You're resigning at the end of this, or you're going to be yeah. in Congress till the end of this term, uh, leaving in, in January. 
Um, tell, inform people about, I mean, you really hold a historical uh, marker here for having been involved in more of these impeachment inquiries than anyone else. What would your advice be to the White House and to the Democratic leadership about this rush to impeachment? Well, I think the rush to impeachment, the White House is going to have to take it seriously uh, because Pelosi, is, I think, is going to try to get the votes to keep her caucus uh, in line at least until the election. Now, she may lose some seats uh, over this when the public mm -hmm. sees how this plays out uh, over the next year. Mm -hmm. You know, the Republicans are going to be, you know, very, very aggressive. Uh, which I hope I'm doing right now, you know, and pointing out that this latest uh, 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 iteration, which involves the transcript with the president of the Ukraine, you know, is nothing more than hot air. And, you know, hopefully uh, they will turn their concern about global warming and uh, closing down some of the hot air that is coming. You know, I have done as a manager or prosecutor elected by the House four impeachments in the Senate, the Clinton impeachment and four federal judges who were impeached and removed from office. Uh, in the history of the country, there have only been 19 or 20 impeachments ever voted by the House. Okay. Uh, 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 only one against the president because Clinton uh, was impeached and tried. Uh, Nixon resigned, which uh, dropped the impeachment charges. But nobody has handled more impeachment trials in the Senate uh, than I have in the history of the country. So I do have an institutional memory. And what they don't realize is the Senate requires that everything uh, be proven from scratch, meaning we lawyers say it has to be tried uh, de novo. And it is one heck of a lot of work. Uh, to be able to put together a case uh, where you start out with a blank sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. And again, you're dealing with reversing uh, the decision that the voters made in 2016. Mm. Do you see this stretching clear to the next election? You, the, the, I mean, that process you just described, we are clearly looking at something that could run till November of 2020. Well, they're going to try to speed it up by narrowing uh, the focus on this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's some talk in the Democratic caucus of only using uh, the re uh, Ukraine fiasco, uh, but Nadler has already said that he's continuing to investigate the other things that the Judiciary Committee has been tied up in doing. Mm -hmm. And does this mean that if the first impeachment fails, they're going to try and try and try again? Because they never can take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. They didn't take no for an answer when the people of this country elected Donald Trump. They're not taking no for an answer on having one investigation after the other. There are 20 separate investigations going on in these six House committees. Wow. And, you know, then when there's a Justice Department investigation or two or three, you know, they cry bloody murder. Yeah. You know, the hypocrisy here, you know, is just overwhelming. And um, the American public is going to have to look behind the hypocritical press releases mm -hmm. and uh, uh, MSNBC interviews uh, to figure out exactly what's going on. It's tying up the Brennan. Congress from doing the business we were elected to do. Congressman Sensenbrenner, I'm going to have to leave it there. I thank you so much for your insight and for being here. And we will talk to you thank again you. in the coming days. Thank you very much, Raymond.